Three guys survive a plane crash in the desert. They wander for days, starving and thirsty. They finally come across a lone house and knock on the door, desperate for help. A crusty old lady answers and says she'd be happy to help if one of them will agree to satisfy her first. After a quick discussion, one of the guys decides to take one for the team. He walks into her bedroom while the other two wait outside the house. He tells her to close her eyes and open her legs. He quickly runs to the kitchen and grabs the first shaped thing he can find, an ear of corn. He shoves it in her and throws it out the window. Grabs another, rams it in and throws it out the window. She is finally satisfied and agrees to cook for them. He goes outside to get his friends and they exclaim, we're actually not hungry anymore. We just ate some delicious buttery corn on the cob. The lion gathers all the animals and says, Whoever jumps off that high mountain can sleep with my lioness. The animals climb the mountain and the lion waits below. He waits and waits and suddenly a dot falls down, gets bigger and bam! The bear falls and immediately starts climbing back up. The lion says, well, bear, go sleep with the lioness. But the bear keeps climbing. The lion asks, hey, bear, where are you going? First, I'm going to sleep with whoever pushed me off. The brain gathered all the organs for a meeting. Today's agenda is about the need to shut down one of the organs. Otherwise, the body we live in will die. Let's hear your suggestions. At this point, the jumps up. Let's shut down the kidneys. There are two of them anyway. The brain thinking, no, we can't shut down the kidneys. They protect me from alcohol. Any other suggestions? The jumps up again. Let's shut down the lungs. There are two of them anyway. The brain annoyed. No, the lungs are necessary for both me and the body we live in. Any more suggestions? And again, the p jumps up. Let's shut down. The brain abruptly interrupts, not letting it finish. Enough already. P you better sit down, because when you're standing, I can't think at all. A drug addict decided to buy some drugs. He goes to the market to a familiar seller and says, Listen, what's this thing for $50? I bought it from you recently for 10 the seller replies, take it, you won't regret it. The addict buys it, comes home, stands by the window, lights up and thoughtfully says, I see, I've been deceived. His mother shouts from the kitchen, mom, I'll be right back. I need to sort something out. His mother replies, son, go, go, or else you'll be standing by the window for the second week. One day, a farmer wakes up to go check on his cheese cow. He walks up and finds her dead in the grass. The man is so upset he kills himself. Then his wife wakes up. She finds her husband dead and goes to the lake and kills herself. Next, the first son wakes up and notices everybody is dead. He goes down to the river and sees a mermaid. She swims up to him and says, Having a bad day, huh? I'll tell you what, if you make love to me, Ten times in a row without stopping, I'll bring everyone back to life. But if you don't, I will kill you. He tries to do it, but doesn't make it. She kills him. Then the second son wakes up, and after seeing his dead parents, also goes to the river where he sees his dead brother. The same mermaid swims up and tells him what she told his brother. He asks, if I make love to you twenty times, what will you do? She tells him, if you are able to perform 20 times in a row, I will bring everyone back and make you the richest man alive. He then asks, well, if I do it 20 times in a row, what's stopping you from dying? That's what happened to the cow. A family buys a new car and is driving home, while the mother-in-law warns, don't pick up any hitchhikers, they're all bandits. They see a respectable-looking man with a briefcase, naked. The mother-in-law says, 
Look at that man. He's definitely not a bandit. Stop. Let's pick him up. They let him in, and after a while, the man takes a sawed-off shotgun out of his briefcase and says, Get out of the car. The family begs him not to take the car, promising to do anything he wants. The man thinks and says, Fine, whatever. He pretends to sleep with the wife, forces the mother-in-law to perform oral ethics, defecates on the hood, and makes the husband eat it. Then he leaves. The family continues driving in silence until the wife starts a conversation. He didn't actually sleep with me. He just rubbed himself between my thighs and finished. The mother-in-law says, I didn't perform oral ethics either. I just rubbed my cheek on it and he finished. The husband couldn't hold back and says, And you think I ate his poop? No way. I picked out the potato and spit the rest out. In court, the judge says, The defendant, you killed the mailman with a wrench. A shout comes from the audience. Damn, what an idiot, the judge says. Quiet. After that, you killed the newspaper seller with a shovel. Another shout comes from the audience. You scoundrel. The judge says, silence. Then you ruthlessly beat the milkman to death with a crowbar. Another shout comes from the audience. You bard. I hope you choke. The judge says, I understand. This is terrible. But I ask for silence in the courtroom. Another shout comes from the audience. You don't understand anything. I lived next to him for ten years, and when I needed a wrench or a gas key, that scoundrel always said, No, no. A guy meets a girl. They go to a cafe, to the movies, and then to his country house. Everything seems fine. They're kissing and hugging, and things are progressing towards intimacy. They're both undressed when he suddenly pulls out a gun and points it at the girl's head. He yells, There's snow outside! Go out! They both run outside, completely naked. He tells her, Quickly make a snowman. Hurry up! She does it and the snowman is ready. Then he grabs her and makes love to her passionately. In the morning, the girl tells the guy that everything was great, but she can't understand the purpose of the snowman. He replies, I make love like everyone else, but you'll remember the snowman for the rest of your life. A married couple was on holiday in Pakistan. They were touring around the marketplace, looking at the goods and such, when they passed a small sandal shop. From the inside, they had a Pakistani accent say, You foreigners come in. Come in my humble shop. So the married couple walked in. The Pakistani man said to them, I have some special sandals I think you'd be interested in. They make you wild at eggs like a great dessert camel. Well, the wife was really interested in buying the sandals after what the man had claimed, but her husband felt he really didn't need them, being as so as he. The husband, how could sandals make you into a freak? The Pakistani man replied, Why don't you see for yourself? Well, the husband, after much badgering from his wife, finally conceded to try them on. As soon as he slipped then onto this feet, he got this wild look in his eyes, something his wife hadn't seen in years. Raw, jewel power. In a blink of an eye, the husband rushed off too. The Pakistani man threw him on the table and started tearing at the guy's pants. All the time, the Pakistani man was screaming, You have them on the wrong feet. You have them on the wrong feet. Three men meet in a fast food joint. All three of them are pretty drunk. The first one says, If my wife and I have a week, that's good. The second one says, Well, you're lucky. If I get on top of my wife once a month, that's not bad. The third one says, You guys are just lucky. If my wife didn't sleep with her mouth open, I wouldn't have any sex at all. A traveling salesman asked a farmer to spend the night. The farmer agreed, but told him he would have to sleep in the barn. The farmer, being a nice guy and knowing how horny traveling salesmen get, told the man, 
Look, son, see that wall? It's got three holes in it. You can the first two, but don't mess around with that third hole. Got it? The salesman thanked him and bedded down on a pile of hay. About midnight, he got real horny and decided to take a poke at the first hole. It was good, but not really satisfying, so he took a poke at the second hole. It was even better, but he still wasn't satisfied, so he thought about the third hole and reasoned to himself, If that first hole was pretty good and the second hole was even better, I'll bet that third hole will really do the trick. The next morning the farmer noticed the salesman was still sleeping, so he went about his chores and late in the afternoon he finally saw the salesman wake up. Damn, son! You have been sleeping a long time. What happened? Well, the salesman replied, I should have listened to you. I got horny last night and tried that first hole, and it was pretty fair, but not really satisfying. So I tried the second hole. It was good, but didn't do the job. So I took on that third hole. Say, what's behind them holes anyway? Son, that first hole is my sheep, Dolly. The second hole is my mare, Sally, and that third hole is my milking machine, and that thing don't quit till it gets a quart. A lustful prince is riding on his horse through the forest, field, and past a swamp when he hears a frog speaking with a human voice. The frog said, Prince, kiss me, and I'll turn into a beautiful girl. He kissed her, and suddenly, a supermodel appeared before him. The prince didn't think twice and started making love to her. When he had enough, he got dressed, climbed back on his horse, and was about to leave when she said, Prince, wait, I don't understand. What about the wedding and everything that's supposed to happen in a fairy tale? The prince frowned, got off his horse, approached her, and punched her with an uppercut to the jaw. She flipped three times in the air, hit the ground, and turned back into a frog. The prince picked her up, examined her, put her in his pocket, and said, Dang, what an amazing trick. A husband and wife are driving on a country road. They're not in a hurry at all, going at a speed of about 60 kilometers per hour. The husband is behind the wheel. His wife, sitting on the right, turns to him and says that they have been married for 15 years, but she has decided to tell him that she wants a divorce. The husband continues driving and remains silent, only gradually increasing the speed to 70 kilometers per hour. She then tells him that she doesn't want him to persuade her otherwise because it's already decided. She's been sleeping with his best friend Ronald, who is much better than him in every way. Again, the husband doesn't respond, but quietly increases the speed to 80 kilometers per hour. She then says she's taking their house. The husband is now driving at 90 kilometers per hour. She adds that she's taking the children as well. The speedometer now shows 100 kilometers per hour. She also says she's taking all his money and even the car. The husband continues to remain silent and gradually steers the car towards the edge of the nearest bridge on the road. The wife asks if he will need anything. He finally replies that he doesn't need anything. He has everything he needs. She asks what that is. A second before the car crashes into the concrete wall, he answers, An airbag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.